Man, we're live. It's not, it's this not, is not good. It's not going well. <laughs> All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Schmidt Lavelle. We are live from beautiful Sea Isle, New Jersey. Sea Isle City. Sea Isle City. And we're going to try to make this work for you. We've had some te technical difficulties. We're using a different camera because apparently the better camera that we bought doesn't work doesn't work with sunlight like the shittier camera does yeah. so we're here we're recording we're live in the flesh tim i didn't i didn't realize you know i only ever get to see you on the camera you know wow bigger in person in person yeah. you're just this is incredible camera also adds about 50 pounds <laughs> <laughs> so something i want to bring up right right away as we're starting is the uh the fact that we've reached 200 followers on instagram tim that's a uh celebration i would say big moment for us and um we appreciate all the followers and the likes and the comments and the shares and everything that you guys been doing and if you like what we're doing please continue to follow us like what we're doing and tell your friends tell your family tell tell your kids tell whoever you want to tell to follow us we gave you a little homework last week to tell the person you know that's following or has the most followers, most followers about our show to start following us so if you did that we appreciate you. if you haven't done that yet go and do it it's so much fun we had our most viewed video of uh of our short show and unfortunately it was my uh you know debacle of a 40th birthday video but people like you know it's like a car accident Tim. they take pleasure in other people's misfortune Tom. <laughs> and uh i think that's what we had there for that last uh that last scenario yeah, I'd like to bring up some of the uh, the comments. Um, one from my wife, just saying flagged, which is a fair comment. And I would like to also say that I might have painted her in not the brightest light talking about it. I certainly appreciate everything she did for my 40th birthday to have the, the best celebration I could. And, uh, you know, that's on me. That's uh, the whole thing. It's I, a honest mistake. There's no one else to blame but me, and that's maybe the worst part of it. Yeah, you you, we already addressed that though, Tom, about you taking blame. Yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. And uh, but no, I just want to say thank you again to my wife. I just said she was doomsday, and I think that's all I mentioned about her. She does have a tendency to when describing my antics to make it seem as bad as possible, but she did a great thing for me well, and she, I appreciate it. She also allows you to go on to a show and share your most embarrassing probably experience. Yeah ever with a lot of our friends and followers so this is very generous of allowing you to do that what a sweetheart so also on our comments we had put out a video on a uh, hook a movie mm -hmm. near and dear to our hearts and we got a comment saying tim i love your captain hook impression oh really can we do some more captain hook impressions ah <laughs> Uh, I mean, I'll definitely do that. Why don't you tell me which ones you want? You just like movie lines? I'd like to see Captain Hook maybe getting the wrong order at a restaurant. You know, like if they mess it up, you know. What? No, I want the pancakes, Jack. I want the pancakes, not the French toast. <laughs> you what do. Is, what is this syrup? <laughs> Send it back. Send it back, Smee. I want a pancake. I want some butter. I want some syrup. Me, me, me. <laughs> Tim, actually, I made that comment up because I wanted to see you do another oh. Captain Hook. Because <laughs> I loved your Captain Hook impression. Well, thank you. And not to not to upset you with that. No. All right. So as we said, thank you for listening. Thank you for following. Thank you for subscribing to whatever you do. We're available on all podcast platforms in YouTube, Instagram, Twitter. Follow us. We're going to be trying to put out as much funny stuff and, and stuff that we want to talk about. Are we on TikTok, too? I thought we were on TikTok. On TikTok? Did I not say TikTok? I don't think you did. TikTok. And so that link's in our Instagram. So if you want to just click on that and hit a little follow. Uh, tons of views and tons of likes. One of our most viewed wrestling uh, videos was on TikTok. We got, uh, you know, over over this past week, thousands of views. 60,000, I think it was, right? Something like that. Something views. crazy. So people... People are viewing it at least. Yeah. And uh so what as we said, we're on vacation. And I gotta first of all talk, can I interrupt real quick? Yeah, I just gotta please. say the setting you've provided here for, for today's show is is absolutely phenomenal. 
Can we do a quick like like downturn? little pan here? I mean, Let's look. see where we're at. Let's just give a little. I mean, can you see a little view ski? Like, uh, you know, a little. That's a towel, and then uh, as you can see, we're on the oh, beach. We're living large. Yeah, it's not bad. You, you know, out there? as a as social media influencers, there's certain perks, and uh, you know. Maybe one of our sponsors reached out and said, hey, we got a sweet little house for you to stay yeah, at. And yeah. maybe I ended up paying a boatload of money myself to stay here for a week. <laughs> <laughs> Something out of pocket. Out we of were pocket. we were saying, too, that when I was a kid, I never had anything like this. We were like we didn't get a lot of vacation time and probably because we were such shitheads. Like whenever we would go on vacation, my parents would be like, this is the last time right. we're doing this. Right. Like we're not doing this again. And we certainly didn't have a house basically on the beach uh, with, like, multiple bathrooms, yeah. you know? No, it was usually only one bathroom. It's like the house we had at home. You know, the, everyone waited for the shower. Yeah. It's just, it's uh, it's nice to have nice things, Tom. It is. Like, and we would get it so my parents, it seems like we'd always be renting a, a hotel or a motel or something like that. And there was a limit on the occupancy in the room. Right. And so since there was four kids and two adults, that's six. So we were over the limit every single time. So it was like, keep it down. Yeah. You can't. We, we're going to get you in. And then we're going to act like it's just, the you know, so many of us. And then, you know, the one time there was a kitchen in the actual motel, like it was like a bed. Like an O'Connor Lodge, something like that. I guess, you know, and there was a bed and then there was like a kitchen and then the bathroom. But we all shared it. I didn't know any better, so I didn't think. But these I, kids you, think they get everything for free. You thought it was a castle, you know? Yeah. They're like, look at this place. We're yeah, right. On the beach, got our own place. It's amazing. Yeah. Sleeping on the floor. It's awesome. <laughs> no air conditioning, but even better. So we're on vacation. And, you know, Tim, what seems to be happening to me on my vacation is a lot of bribery. Oof. You know, I don't know if that's a parenting technique that you use bribery, but uh, with your kids or with your with my kids or with my kids, you know, she so, for example, they're very excited and they want to wake up. And as soon as they wake up, they're ready to go. So I created a sleeping prize where if you sleep in a prize you, for going to bed. Huh? Yeah. And the, the rule is you have to go to bed, stay in this room. And at 7 a.m., there's a clock in there. At 7 a.m. is the time you can leave the room. If you do that, $5 a kid. That's, that's, that's good boardwalk money, I'll tell you that. Yeah. And I said, and think about it, throughout the week, it adds up. So you get five, 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 five. You got a week. Yeah, that's 35 bucks. Well, I can see how that would work. Um, I tried a different tactic this week, Tom. I... Told my kids that they are in charge of setting their bedtime schedule. The first night did not work so well. They stayed up till almost one o'clock in the morning. And then the last two nights, they've put themselves to bed at 10 o'clock and 1030 respectively. Really? <laughs> yeah. I was pretty impressed. And they're probably still sleeping in at this moment right now. Wow. Yeah. Well, uh, that's uh, that may be something to see now. Your daughters are a little bit old. My kid's five years old. Yeah. Now his niece or his uh, my niece and nephew, they're a little bit older. So that might work for them. My nephew's responsible. Great kid. My niece, like, don't get me wrong, but my nephew, it's like, man, this kid is, I don't know if he's Ed, Eddie Haskell in me, mm -hmm. but he's like, it's just the sweetest. Hey, kid. listen, look, I mean, you're going to run out of money if this, this thing continues to happen. They're going to figure it out and you're just going to carry it over on vacation. I mean. That might start continue at home, and then all of a sudden, like you're starting to lose lose money by the day. Yeah, over a year, that's a lot of money. It's, it's quite the quite the salary. <laughs> it's almost what you it's almost what you make at Graham's. Oh Jesus, I'm gonna be in the hole. <laughs> so, interesting story. Last night we were putting the kids to bed, and so what we like to do is we set up a movie, and they all watch it. And they're watching the movie. There's a TV in my sister in law and brother in law's room so we put them on the bed they watch the uh the tv and it's kind of a strange situation because there's a king size bed a queen size bed there's bunk beds and then a full mattress in the one room and so since we have the baby we have the bigger 
bedroom, the okay. biggest bedroom. And we have the pack and play in there with the baby. And so he's kind of everyone's schedule is like tentative on the baby Benny. And so either way, we have him upstairs. The kids are watching there and we're like, hey, we're not eating in this bed. This is where your aunt and uncle are going to sleep, blah, 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 your mom and dad. Well, we're there and we're sitting in the living room. They're watching their movie. They're watching Little Rascals yeah. and they're loving it. Yep. A favorite movie. And so they, we start to hear a yell, mom. And we're like, what's going on? You know, another mommy. And then a, like a bone chilling mommy, you know? And I was like, and so like, we're what now I'm, I've started running to the room. Like what, like something was wrong. We get in the room and my kid is throwing up. Oh my everywhere. God. Oh my God. Everywhere. Exorcist throw up. Like he's, he's like, I didn't know he could have that much in him all over the bed, all over the mat, or like all over the, the blankets, the comforter. I quick grab him. I take him into the bathroom and we got him on the toilet. He finishes in the toilet and he wasn't like, he's not like sick. Right. Here we go. Hold on. Quick adjustment. Uh, quick adjustment. Sorry. Does that help a little yeah. bit there? Look That's at that. Cute. So it's it's now all over the mattress. And so my sister-in-law quick grabs her stuff. She's in the tub. She's rinsing it all off. She's trying to clean it up. She's, you know, now we're getting everything. There's puke all over my shorts now. It's all over Mickey. We're trying to get him cleaned up. The kids, the other kids are, are in a thing. Like my nephew's got issues. Like he, you know, when he, you probably know people that if they see someone throw oh, up, yeah, that's what, they're that's, going to throw yep. up. And he's now worried that he's going to throw up. And we're trying to, okay. We're, it's, and they just saw this traumatic thing. My little kid just like, ah, you know, you know whatever, everywhere. Like Team America. And this is at like 10, 10 p.m. Well, of course, in that ruckus, my baby wakes up and now he's screaming upstairs. Uh -huh. My mother in law runs up, grabs the baby who is now screaming. We're trying to clean it up. On top of that, I feel like, oh, my God, my kid just like if their kids would have thrown up, it would have been so much better for me. You know what I mean? Because, well, you can point the finger too. Right. It's just like, it's, but like now the bed that they had to sleep in, which is not as nice of a bed that we're sleeping in, is ruined. But like, it's, Tim. it's, it's, look, it's, it's a hard thing. It's a hard thing to get through that type of, that type of scenario. It's uh, it's not good for anybody, Tom. I mean, first of all, the cleanup's going to be a mess, right? It was, and then you got you know people bickering back and forth about why why did you throw up and this and that. You don't really want to infringe on anyone's time because it's on vacation, right? Right. You want to be hey, as diplomatic as possible in these types of scenarios. You want to kind of hey, listen, I got it. I'll take care of it. You want to you know you want to infringe less on someone's time, right? And that's all it does. It creates chaos. Yeah. And you're trying to clean up and you don't want, you know, it's just a, it's a, it's a brutal type of situation, Tom. Plus they're already in a downgraded sleeping situation yeah. and they couldn't sleep there last night mm -hmm. because their sheets were in the wash. Mm -hmm. We were getting ready to go to bed. So now they're sleeping. The one was in the bunk bed. My brother-in-law's on the couch, but I couldn't move my, the baby's thing. So I don't know. I, I said, wherever you guys want to sleep, you can sleep. I'll sleep on the cat. Like, I don't want to like, and they're like, no, no, no. Like they were great about it, but it's a tough situation. Cause I feel like, yes, they're, they're, they're obviously doing all the right things, but it's totally an inconvenience for them. I agree. I agree. It is, but I think you handled it right. Hey, listen, I'll sleep wherever. Okay. We'll figure everything else out in the morning. We'll get everything cleaned up. You pick, you take whatever bed you want tonight. You know, do you want, do you need a massage? I'll give you a massage. massage. You know? hey, well, listen, my brother-in-law is pretty handsome. <laughs> I'm pretty sorry about what happened. He's just got to try to make it as comfortable as possible. And, uh, you know, listen, I, what, 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 did, what did he throw up from? We don't know. He wasn't sick. And it wasn't like, like, he's not like nauseous or like, like he doesn't have like, I think we don't know what he threw up from. It's just like it was in there and it had to get out. Maybe I don't know. What an indigestion, is. maybe? We don't know, Maybe you know, something like that. It was a busy day, and yesterday was pretty overcast and windy. We're on the beach, you're serving a lot of sand and stuff like that. That it was like, I don't know if that upset him or or what. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what though. During that that little story there, you you kind of touched on something that really is is a tough thing when you're in a rental, especially at a shore house with people that you don't usually live with, right? right. So like you you got to figure out like the 
co-inhabiting the, whole, the sleeping arrangements who gets what bed if you ever seen the real world right oh yeah like they they blitz into this house right and everyone's running to figure out you know where they're gonna sleep pick the best bedrooms and like dude it's it's a tough it's a tough situation there because you know whoever takes responsibility for actually doing the rental i in my opinion i think they should get, should get first pick they get the best bedroom right, right. the king size bedroom but if that person is a single do they really get the king size bedroom or right. does it does the the the, the family that ha, you know is married and they have two kids right do they deserve a little bit of extra comfortability you know in that whole situation like there's a lot that kind of goes into that tom and and uh you know my sister unfortunately she got stuck with a with a twin bed you know and she sleeps i think in a queen or a full at home and yeah look her her situation is shrunk down a little bit but hey that's those are the breaks you know you're along for the ride that's what you get, you know. You get the last bike that you know, wasn't picked, you yeah. Know? It would, which might have the bad wheel, you know. Yeah, we're and we're trying to make the and everyone's like, you know, you you just try to make it as comfortable for everyone as possible. And it's almost like sometimes you get the the best option, and you're like, oh, you know, like you feel terrible. I mean, I'll take it. Uh-huh. You're like, but it's like, then it's like, oh, how did you sleep? Oh, not as nice as yeah. you. Look at look at this nice bathroom that has a jacuzzi <laughs> attached to my bedroom. I, you know, I I can shit in peace. Is, you know? Did you see the uh, the view off my deck? Yeah. Hey, come on, take a peek. Real <laughs> yeah, quick, yeah. Right, get out, get out. <laughs> Actually, we're still sleeping. Uh, yeah, we've slept until eleven thirty the last three nights. It's been <laughs> incredible. Oh man, I just this bed is it's like Tempur Pedic. Do you, know? you hear the neighbors' <laughs> dogs barking? <laughs> no, I haven't. I I sound, I, my room must be soundproof. There's a sound machine in my room. <laughs> you don't have that? Oh, the ceiling fan made it much cooler. Uh, oh, uh, you, you have a ceiling? Yeah. Ceiling fan in your yeah. room? <laughs> oh, man. So it's tough to to navigate that. And, uh, you know, I mean, I guess, obviously, there's tougher things to deal with. But you want to try to be as accommodating and nice to people as possible. Even even when we're, you know, we're doing this show. And my my wife's like... We're on vacation, you know. You're doing the show, and yeah. really, you know, uh, I guess I'll I, I'll take both kids, you know, and whatever. So I got look. I mean, I got some some crooked eyes at me too. Like, hey, listen, yeah, you you have two kids here. You're on vacation. You know, you're gonna give them breakfast. Like, you're gonna miss out on breakfast. I said, hey, listen, this is the only time we can do it. And we'll go, we'll go, bang it out real quick. Yeah, yeah, you know, that seemed to be a little bit of a challenge. So far. we have had some challenges, but we're making it work. I mean, that's showing our commitment for you. The dozens of followers out there listening to our show that we're committed to to consistently putting out what we consider a fun, happy show for everyone to to listen to. And Tom, you know, this has been something in the works for for a long time. Our our listeners had asked us to do a live show. Yeah, you know, we're giving the listeners what they want. They asked us, you know, to be together, maybe. You, know? you ask, we deliver. And this is this is what we came up with. So <laughs> you know, we planned a vacation down in Seattle together and hey, we're doing a show. So, yeah, I mean, this is probably the biggest event in Seattle today um, by any show or any group yeah, of guys yeah, yes, in, yeah. in Seattle today. We actually have quite the crowd off our deck here, off our balcony, waiting to, yeah. you know, waiting to hear us. And we got the speakers <laughs> blaring a little bit, so <laughs> they're able to hear the show live as well. Yeah, so. and we appreciate you listening and uh, <laughs> you in uh, the sound of applause. All right, Tim, so... The other day I was eating a, oh, ah, speaking of our biggest fan. You never know who's going to be on the show. You never know. <laughs> we'll cut that out. Our so, first guest. Our first... <laughs> Come on down. So we, uh, yesterday we, we've sliced up for the, for the beach, some watermelon. Okay. And, um, we're eating watermelon and we have it and I'm eating it and, Tim, I want to pose a question to you. Is it fair to call it seedless watermelon? I'm eating a seedless watermelon that seems to have hundreds of seeds. Um, yeah, it kind of seems like a a little bit of an oxymoron. They might be white seeds, but they are seeds nonetheless. Now, does a seed become a seed at a certain point, or is it always a seed? You know, it's a once a seed, always a seed. Yeah. Well, unless you plant it in the ground and it becomes a nice flower. <laughs> <laughs> But so is it is it is it BS to call it a seedless watermelon? Should we 
should I be fighting the the seedless watermelon campaign now? I don't know what else you would call it. You could have a watermelon, a seeded watermelon. I don't know. What else would you call it? A white seeded watermelon or? Well, Tom, I, I don't eat much fruit, so uh, I'm kind of out on this conversation. <laughs> I think you might have to, uh, you might have to, uh, you know, appeal to the masses for this one because I'm not a fruit guy, right? Also, not a vegetable guy, you know. I stay away from those healthy things, as you can probably tell. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, like you said, we have our first guest on the show, and he's out here emptying the cooler. The guy got a great night's sleep last night. He probably has the best. Um, the he got the best spot in the house. Um, front row seat to the TV. Front row seat to the TV. Beautiful couch. He's currently probably doing all the things that I should be doing. Yep. He's, he's, he's but still... as we said, we're committed to you. <laughs> the dozens of fans out there pop? listening. You want a beer too? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all 200 of you. All right. So, Tim, another thing on vacation that I've noticed is the Fudgy Wudgy Man. Are you familiar with the Fudgy Wudgy Man? I Can I tell a quick story before Please. you get into No. All right. So, last year, the Fudgy Wudgy Man, this little older man we were in, we were in Wildwood last year. We're on the beach, and my kids see the fudgy wudgy man. He, he comes by as always, right? And the kids are, I need, I need something to eat, Dad. I want, I want an ice cream pop or whatever. And I need the fudgy wudgy guy. And I go to reach in my wallet, and I got, I got no cash on me. Oh, I got man. no cash on me. Fudgy wudgy guy, this older gentleman. Hears me say that to my kids. He turns to me. He goes, he goes, son, don't worry about it. I got you this time. And the fudgy wudgy man gives both my kids popsicles. Doesn't ask for cash. And he says to me, just pay it forward in the future. Just, hey, listen, it happens all the time. But my job is to make the kids happy. He goes, and your kids are going to be happy with these two popsicles. Just pay it forward. He said, next time you see a fudgy wudgy man, buy it for another kid. And guess what? I returned that favor on Monday. Wow. Yeah. Pretty cool. What a what a guy. Yeah. Shout out to that fudgy wudgy old guy at Wildwood. Yeah. What a class act, yeah. you know. No, that's absolutely. Uh, absolutely. That's something that Were you about to complain about the fudgy wudgy guy? Because I have nothing but good things to say about Well, uh, <laughs> not so much about the guy itself, but the whole process. Tim, what are you buying? What do you know the particular popsicle that they bought um my daughter got like one of those remember the screwball screwball yeah screwball two ball now i guess it's called so you get two uh-huh. two uh gumballs in the bottom of the screwball that's to me the only thing you can buy from the fudgy wudgy guy and the other day it was later we're on the beach first day down here mm-hmm. and he, he was out of a lot of stuff well i mean it's in theory, I can't believe that he has as much stuff in that thing as, as he does. Right. I mean, it's insane. I mean, how many kids go up to that thing? It's not like your normal Jack and Jill, you know, truck that comes down you know, the street and, you know, has a plethora of freezers in there with a lot of. And a truck. Yeah. yeah. You know, like this dude is a cooler. I mean, he's got to have some sort of like, like stash. Like It's like Mary Poppins when it, he's pulling stuff dude, out of there. It's, it's, it's like. Yeah, it's, How, where did that come from? It, it's incredible that thing. It's on solid wheels. It goes off terrain. Yeah, you know, it's on an all terrain vehicle, right? Which is fantastic. He's on the sand. It's it's uh it's quite a little thing that they got going on here. It's I've noticed nice more more on wheels things now. There's a coffee person out there. There's an acai person out there. I've seen, and it seems to be becoming more like people have have noticed and tried to capitalize on the fudgy wudgy success mm-hmm. and are now trying to to implement their own like a copycat type of a business. copycat That's what yeah. It is. yeah i'm gonna go up the wudgy fudgy <laughs> like a, yeah dude i mean I, look there's certain things that you need on the beach uh you know what like be a nice like a like a little, little like sandwich shop on wheels like peanut butter and jellies like right. the basic stuff. That Turkey would, and cheese, ham yeah, and cheese. Yeah, like grilled cheese. No, not grilled cheese. Maybe like an American cheese sandwich with mustard. I'm not a cold cuts guy. Right. I don't like, you know, like the uh, the slimy, like ham meat. You know, I don't like any of that. No? Stuff. No. No, it gets slimy, dude. Don't be. It gets all What if wet. it's fresh? Yeah, fresh. You're saying like maybe not sitting in a cooler all day. I'm not touching that. But like if you're at the deli, could you do a ham and cheese or no? 
if it comes, yeah, if it comes fresh, yes, I okay. can do that. Yeah, I, I can't like you have the lunch meat and you put it in your in your little drawer there, and like after three days you go grab like a slice and it's like it's all wet and it's just nasty. I'm yeah. out. Yeah. I, hey, I agree with you. I'm a, I'm very anti food poisoning. I don't want to mess with any of that stuff if no, it's greasy that or anything. Shows, yeah. yeah, I'm not I'm not touching it. So the 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 fudgy wudgy people are trying to trying to take over. Man, there was something I was gonna go with from there. That I interrupted you. No, I, I apologize. No, we dude. didn't really have time to go through our rundown. But I mean, we're we're doing. Oh a- well, so then the idea of. They, they have the fudgy wudgy, and now we're saying there's a coffee, there's the acai. You're saying a sandwich, a sandwich wudgy, yeah, would be. I would like a sandwich wudgy, you know, you like peanut butter and jelly seems like you could get the uncrustables, that seems pretty easy. And you know, different things they do all sorts of delivery on the beach, you know, maybe, uh, you know, I think you're taking it well, not you, but I think you're taking it a little far when you're getting delivery on the beach, right? Right? Like, I mean, I love. I love the idea of the beach. Right. I actually hate the sand. Did we ever talk, did we talk about you've, this before? You've off the air. You've uh, mentioned. I my suggestion is that you next turf the entire beach. You next turf it. Beautiful. And yes. then you have the airport runway type deal where like, you know, it's just a conveyor belt to get you onto the beach. What about pods? Like instead of the entire beach, there's just like there's big like pods of you know area that is covered non sand. No, just no. next turf. Next turf, and the then you thing. use kinetic sand as the actual sand. Love kinetic sand. And you can like you can imagine the things that these kids will build on the on the beach, and it won't even fall apart. Like it's just kinetic sand. You got next turf. It, drinking can be allowed. Right? Oh man! You can get like outlets, right? You can plug plug it right into the next An turf. outlet into the turf. Yep. Yeah, and so then you got your phone charging while you're out there. That's that's my idea, and I'm I'm sticking to it. I think it's going to be the future billion of dollar idea. Yeah, the future of beaches discovered here today on Schmidt and Lavelle. So another fun thing we've gotten to do on vacation, Tim. Fun is uh, family photos. Ooh. So we got to do family photos last night. It's got a your, whole thing. Nice we little got, white shirts on. We did. I did have like a white like shirt, you know, like what what's what's that material? It's uh linen. Linen. So kind of like a linen kind of thing that usually people wear. My nephew have one of those on. And we're all kind of, you know, different whites and shades of blue, oh, khaki. Beautiful. You know what I mean? Kind of like this, kind of like this shade here, you know. Oh, shout out to Alex's Alex's pizza. Alex's pizza. Local business, local, local spot. Mm-hmm. So, um, my idea was to have someone walking up and down the beach just with, Hey, you want a family photo? I got it here. I'll email it to you, you know, 10 bucks for some quick pics. Like, just get it done. What do you think about that? So, that used to happen back in the day. I remember when I was, uh, in Ocean City, Maryland years ago, they would go around and they would take a quick photo, yeah, of you and then they would put it in like a keychain. And like it would have like you could look at it and you could see it in like this little. Oh yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. They, they used to exist. Now it almost looked like like if you were like on a cheerleading squad and you would hold up the thing to like let's go. Yes, yeah. And it would like you could look into it. But yeah, if you remember right. like the kaleidoscope, all you would yeah. have to do is like hold it up to the sun. And you'd be like, oh, because I had a picture of me and my cousin, and we had, we had gotten one done on the Ocean City, Maryland beach. Now obviously. They didn't expand upon that idea because I think you you were onto something here. They could they could really make that a solid business. I, I mean, seriously, if you got say you charged ten bucks, or like, but and then you also say, hey, if you're trying to set an appointment where you want to be wearing something like I do spots here, whatever, mm-hmm. you could sell it that way, and you you could do a couple like because a lot of times you're like, hey, can you take a picture of all of us to some stranger or something? Especially if you have it like today, you have the Schmidt. The Schmidt day down the beach, yeah, right? Yep. And your whole crew's there. And I come walking by with a camera. Hey, I was, you know, and maybe I have a fudgy wudgy thing with some props in there, yeah. you know, like you can hold a sign like Sea Isle 2023. Really or, nice shirts. Yeah. Iron, you know, yeah. Linens. Yeah. Linens. No, but just like just things, signs to hold up, whatever, you know, 20 bucks. And I'll take, you know, you get about 15 minutes of photos here and then I'll email you the, the options and you can pick five, you know? I, I mean, it seems in theory, like a great idea. I just, uh, look, they're doing, the I don't old, want to do it. I'm they're just doing, saying. they're doing old time photos on the, on the, 
boardwalk. Why can't you do family photos on the beach? Yeah. You know? Yeah, right. I mean, you don't have the, like you said, the setup. You don't have the 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 bones to do it, but hey, why not? Well, like you like you push the cart, like the fudgy wudgy guy, and you you know you can offer different signage, you know, like you know family vacation, you know, or just whatever. See how, and you just have that, and maybe some silly hats. I don't know, and you can you can make some some magic happen. I'm throwing that idea out there for someone. I want to cut though if you're doing it. You know what I mean? All right, Tim. So I look here, here, here's a <laughs> dude. Um, where are we still doing beach topics or yeah, we move on it. to the movie beach topics? No. Okay. Um, on top of what you talked about, like the fudgy wudgy stuff we talked about, yeah, we talked about the sand on the beach and all that stuff. My question to you is at these beach houses. Okay. Right. Why? Why is it so difficult, right? Especially in New Jersey, which is considered South Philadelphia, right? Or you know, Philadelphia, Philadelphia South, or whatever. Why can I not get the Phillies game on any of these TVs down here? Like, yeah, they set me up with Roku TV, all right, and like it's you can go live TV with Roku, and it's all shows and news from like two days prior. Like my my dad. <laughs> Rocco TV on, and he's watching like, oh my god, I ninety five collapsed, <laughs> yeah, dude. It was, it was the submarine that that that, <laughs> that sank, and he's like, you believe this? And I was like, what what day is that from? <laughs> and like, and they're like they're complaining about how they couldn't watch the Phillies. The Phillies were finally on last night, and they're looking all up and down for for the Phillies, and they're like, oh well, they're not on, but this Mets Astros game is on, and it's like Mets Astros with Jeff Bagwell playing from like nineteen ninety four. It was a no hitter, <laughs> and like and then my uncle goes, "Oh, the Phillies are up five two, and it was like from nineteen ninety four. Oh my god! So it's like, look, I know we have like streaming services that we're able to like get the Phillies on, and I, for the life of me, I tried to set it up. Yeah, and apparently there's a guest mode with Roku to TV, and you can't sign into any apps now on this TV. Like, what what are we doing down here? Yeah, it's it's Philadelphia style. Like, let's get like regular cable on, especially if you're renting. Yeah, get the people what they want. Yeah, and if they want to bring something to stream, like you can quickly detach a Roku from your TV at home. Bring it down here. Boom. All right. We've got Disney Plus for the kids. We can throw on a movie or whatever it is. Netflix. But offer the cable and and, and maybe say, hey, it's on you to bring a, a streaming device if you want. Yeah. I don't know. I, I just it's frustrating. Yeah, we're watching last year's uh, soccer championship from the men's uh, national championship, which was a great game, by the way. When you don't know what happens, I guess it's OK. Yeah. Another big thing for us is the coffee machine, getting a good coffee machine that actually works. We've fortunate to have one here this year i want to say the last five years it's been like overflow coffee or like the one time they had a commercial coffee thing where you had to load the water in fill it up it would stay hot all the time so it's ready to make one right away and it's like wait what's good and so then we had overflow with that because you're like well it's not work like what's going on you needed a manual to figure this thing we had to look it up okay what's the design of this thing how do we how do we work it was it was ridiculous let's say the coffee machine we have in in our house is like a it's like a starting up a spaceship <laughs> this thing is ridiculous <laughs> dude you need like two people to turn their keys at the same time to get yeah. it activated it's clicking all the stuff <laughs> yeah it's like oh we go on smoke, this smoke's coming out yeah yeah it. coffee coffee ready to go in five yeah. Four, can you, three. Can you two. imagine? I would love to do like a, just a test of like these kids these days or young adults that have never actually made a cup of coffee with like beans. Put the filter in the top, right? Like, oh, what know, they're all Keurig, yeah. always Keurig. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like they don't know how to make a an old school cup of oh, coffee. And those are the best and cups. I've never had a cup of coffee in my life, and my mom used to make me put the coffee on for herself. So I right. put the coffee on. She started coffee for me, and I'm like, yeah, okay, no problem. Filter in, do the whole thing. I used to do it at the restaurant too when I was working at a really? restaurant. Yeah, I had to make the coffee for everybody, fresh batch. Make the donuts. Make calf, regular calf, you know. Uh, regular calf. Regular, no, regular. <laughs> regular. And the calf. <laughs> See, I don't know coffee. That's it. But he knows how to make it. Regular. He'll whip you up the best cup of coffee you've ever Rogers, had. Baby. He Rogers. won't touch it though. <laughs> All right, Tim. So the other day I watched a movie and I remember the movie fondly. 
And I'm, I'm going to pose a question to you after we kind of talk about this movie. So let's bring that back. Okay. But. The movie is Enemy of the State. Are you familiar with this movie? Fan- it, well, look, I, I use fantastic a lot. And I'm going to say the movie was ahead of its time. And it was, uh, I said, I think it was exceptional, especially it's like one of Gene Hackman's like last really like blockbuster movies before yeah. he started getting a little older. I want to run through who was in this movie real quick. We've got Will Smith, Gene Hackman, John Voight, Regina King. If you don't know her, she's a mm-hmm. she's a superstar. Lisa Bonet from The Cosby Show. Mm-hmm. Jack Black, Scott Kahn, Seth Green, Jason oh. Lee, Barry Pepper, et cetera, et cetera. There's more people in this movie, super like big time actors, actresses in this movie. Tim I rewatched it, and you, you know, like it. I would say a little hokey, if that's a, a good word. Hokey. It's it's if you watch the end of the movie, spoiler alert if you haven't seen it, they have Gene Hackman captured, right? Will Smith is you know enemy of the state. They they they're hacking into your the satellites. They're watching everything you're doing. Jason Lee has accidentally filmed. A killing by John Voight and his crew that works with the CIA or something like that. And he has this video that is now out and there's copies of it. And they're trying to hunt that down. And whoever saw the video of them killing this congressman that's trying to stop them from tapping into all the people's technology. Either way, there's a bunch of chase scenes Mm -hmm. that are ridiculous. There's there's the the whole premise of like Jason Lee catches saying he's running through trying to get away with this cassette because he's on like they're on to him. Mm -hmm. And He's running through, goes into a lingerie where Will Smith is buying lingerie for his wife. And Will Smith's like, oh, my God, Jason Lee from from Georgetown. We yeah. went to college. To get, and he just runs away. You know, it's like there's no like what? You know, oh, they, fun fact. They did actually go to college. Yo. Did they really? <laughs> oh, ah. <laughs> so then he ends up getting killed. Long story short, at the end of the movie, they've got Gene Hackman. They're 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 done, and Gene Hackman's in this van with Jack Black and Seth Green, and you know there's some trouble going into the Italian deli or whatever the Italian like mobsters thing. He's like, "What are you doing? You're just gonna sit here and watch him? You got to get in there. You got to help him." And they're like, "Uh, yeah, maybe maybe we should get." And they get out of the fucking van, like totally coaxed into it, like a bunch of jamokes, the biggest dummies I ever seen in my life, like totally unreal. Totally unbelievable. It didn't. I was like, this is not good. Terrible henchmen. Yeah, the worst. Like out of a comedy. Actually, they were really good henchmen, like throughout the entire movie until the end. Because they were, yeah, you know, they were tapping everything. They were, yeah, you know, creating, yeah, you know, they were wiping his bank account. They let's just, go to the board here. Let, yeah, yeah, let's do this. And they just thought they were doing, you know. They're, they're not really good with the physical part of the job. They're good with the IT stuff. Right. Yeah, you know, they just couldn't really think on their feet. Either way, I thought the movie wasn't that great. And I'm starting to to think, you know, and I know he's been going through a rough spell and I want him to be great because he's from Philadelphia. I took pride in Will Smith and I'm taking pride in like him being so famous. And that was a Philadelphia guy and this and that. Is Will Smith overrated? When's the real last like movie you saw of his? You're like, wow. Well, he used to be the king of the blockbuster, the summer blockbuster. Right. And uh, yeah, it's really kind of kind of falling off i mean this the slap heard around the world has has really set him back a little bit but even those blockbusters when i look back at it like an enemy of the state was a blockbuster you know what i mean don't get me wrong men in black i loved you know independence day i loved Mm -hmm. you know what i mean but like other movies that he's been in particularly recently i'm like uh and and i want to say i think it's recently tim it might be a dozen years um yeah he hasn't really made a i mean he did uh What's the one where he's the the, the dad? He's the oh yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, no, he did he did uh the Serena Williams movie? I, yeah, look, I think he got. What'd you think of that? Yeah, he was he won Best yeah, Actor. Yeah, yeah. He but I didn't think that movie was. You I know, thought it was, I thought it was pretty good. I mean, he he's doing these uh these different character takes. pursuit of happiness. I think pursuit he was referencing. Yeah, um, but uh, look, he's had a, a really good career. You can't argue that he's got big big time no doubt box office. Actor. But is he overrated? I'm starting to think he's overrated. I think he's just. I think at at this point he's he's overrated. He hasn't really done great movies lately, um, and great movies tend to be blockbusters, right? They tend to be you know these box office smash hits that bring in all types of money. He hasn't had one of those lately. 
Um, but he has been recognized for his acting skills. So I, I would say he's not overrated. Oh, not overrated, says Timmy. I'm going to say slightly overrated. I think his late 90s, early 2000s kind of shtick and idea of making movies has now fallen flat since then. I think he's taken serious roles. He was Ali. I didn't think that was that great of a movie. When people talk about like, oh, man, all time great movies, they don't reference Ali. They don't reference The Pursuit of Happiness. They don't reference I, Robot. You know, I robot, you know, and it's like this whole thing of like he's in this like in this crazy situation. And then here comes the funny little. Qu- well, that's a lot of robots. What about ba- bad boys? One, two and three. I, I, I a little overrated, I think. I mean, don't get me wrong, like kind of enjoyable, but a little, you know, I I, I really haven't seen a like a masterpiece from Will Smith. <clears throat> um. Yeah, I would, I would, I would agree with that. When you, people ask you your top ten favorite movies, are you naming a Will Smith movie? I mean, Independence Day was really good. Dude. I love Independence Day, but he wasn't even like you know there were so many major characters from that movie, and that was I think what set him off. And I love Men in Black. I thought he was great in that, and obviously it's Fresh not, Prince. It's not in my top ten. No, no, no. There's no top ten Will Smith movies now. Yeah, and it's not even like close. Yeah. I don't know. For someone that's such a mega star, it's like, man, like this guy, I don't know. I, you know, he he obviously delivers the views and the sales, but I'm just I'm not seeing the content like you're getting here on Schmidt and Lavelle. Let me can can we touch on the movie that I need to touch yes. on? Yes. So this movie has been <clears throat> in the news for for the last like month. It's it's a Netflix movie. It's highly touted as like one of the top action movies like ever created. And it's called Extraction. Have you heard about this movie? I have heard of Extraction. Who's in it? It's Chris Hel- Helmsworth. Oh, yeah. No, I haven't seen it. So it's essentially, it's just a movie about a dude trying to rescue his, his wife, his wife's sister and their children. And it's nonstop action from minute one to minute whatever. I think it's two hours long. They have a Rocky training montage in it, yes. like a Rocky Four training montage. It's almost the same exact Rocky Four montage. It's crazy. Is he he's lifting coming, rocks and stuff like he that? He is. He's <laughs> chopping wood. It's There is literally no storyline. I just gave you the storyline. That's it. There's no dialogue. You have no idea what's going on in the movie. It's just, it's it's really a bad movie in terms of like what a, a movie is. I mean, look, I guess cool you, action, but I, just no substance. I guess you could say like you kind of know what you're getting into when you turn it on. Yeah. But I mean, I'm expecting a little bit more out of my action movies, right? right. Like, well, I need, what's the story? Yeah, like I need some cheesy like dialogue and stuff yeah. like that. Like, yeah. Arnold used to be the king of. These I was gonna shows. say I can show Commando, but at least he's going to save his daughter. Right. You know what I mean? Like, like that. Uh, Sylvester Stallone used to make really terrible action movies, but they're really good. Yeah, Tango and Cash is a classic. Travolta, Cage, all these guys, right? Like, right. Helmsworth has been, he's, I think, Bruce he's been, Willis, you know, he's been typecast as, as Thor forever. And now he's trying to make these army movies. And I'm like, eh, I'm not buying it. Where's the hammer? You know, <laughs> <laughs> like, what if he's having like a regular movie, right? And what if it was this movie? He's going into extraction and he's like, oh man. This is, and he's like getting beat down and he's done. And then all of a sudden he goes like this and the hammer shows up. And it's just like, wait, is this Thor? <laughs> look, look, we're just, we're not feeling it right now. And he's like, what if I brought in the hammer? <laughs> I did love Fat Thor. He was one of my favorites. That's what I'm saying. Like that, at least those Marvel movies had some, some comedic influence on them. Right. Like, the character was great. Like Helmsworth in this movie is just like, I, I mean, I get like, He's supposed to be some like Rambo type character, like Navy SEAL, whatever. Right. But it's just it's just a terrible movie, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm I don't and know. They're, and they're I... making another one. They're making <laughs> making extraction three. Should I check it out to see if you just you check it out. You do your homework. Okay. You watch it, you tell me what you think about it. Let the people know. All right. And right. then we'll get some feedback on comments, maybe. We're going to get some comments on it. If you have watched Extraction, 
let us know what you think about it. I'm going to review it myself and try to bring it back to uh, the, next week. The reason why I watched it was because my buddy told me it was one of the best action movies ever. Oh, my False. God. False. I don't want to name the person who did it. But, so. Denny. Denny. Come on, Denny. Get it together, Denny. So, that's going to wrap it up for this week's episode live here from from beautiful Sea Isle City on vacation. Schmidt and Lavelle. I was sad we didn't hear any seagulls. I'm not. Some a seagull swiped my sandwich the other day. Not swiped it, but knocked it on the ground. Yeah. I had it in my hand. Boom. You hit it, knocked it on the ground. Timmy, is there anything you want to say out there to all the, the fans that are that are listening and, and appreciating everything we, we offer here? No, we just we really appreciate you guys tuning in and and your suggestions for us to come down here to do this live show. Um, to all the fans out there down below, appreciate you showing up. Thank to, you for to, showing, to especially you and you. <laughs> but uh, we appreciate you listening. Like we said, if you like what we're doing, please give us a like, a share, a follow, a subscribe. Tell your friends, tell your family. We love you. We will see you next time. And uh, we hope you have a great rest of your week. And me and Timmy are going to be down here enjoying our vacation with the fam. Budgie Wudgy and all that Seattle City has to offer. By the way, quick shout-out to Mike Seafood. Great me- meal there the other night. Oh, and Sunrays. And Sunrays. Sunrays for Timmy's beautiful whip that you will see on our Instagram story. Thank you for listening. For Schmidt Lavelle, my name's Tom Lavelle. As always, I'm accompanied by Tim Schmidt. Have a great week. Enjoy. <laughs>